good morning and happy Sunday to you all. Welcome home. Welcome to Valley Praise. So blessed to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Let's stand to our feet and let's come into worship together. direction that you feel that you, you should be or you don't know if it's the right path, um, just trusting in God and knowing that he'll lead you in the direction that you need to be in, amen, and that's such a blessing to, to have that trust um, in those times that we feel weary or just kind of lost in our own uh, in our own selflessness, and, and it's just really comforting to come into that mentality like, you know what, God's got me, <laughs> um, and, and that's what we want to really bring in with this worship today is just knowing in those times of weariness and those times of exhaustion and, and tiredness, just knowing that you just have to put your trust in God and know that his path is always the right path. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some, and right now Stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be all right. But right now, oh, right now, I just care. It's easy. 
we come here today, maybe we come here weary, maybe we come here tired, Lord, but we come here just placing our trust in you and knowing that even when we don't see the results, Lord, they're there, Lord, and, and that you're still standing beside us and holding us and carrying us through those times that we feel just lost or, or just misdirected, Lord. I pray for those that are here this morning that are feeling heavy-hearted, uh, that they leave here feeling a little more comforted in you, Lord, and in your trust. And because even in those times that we're tired and weary, let us never tire of our trust in you, Lord. That's that's the, the biggest thing that I, I pray for, Lord, is that we are always just keep our trust in you. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen. Let's continue worshiping God together. There were moments nothing takes on flesh and just so it's fine to feed. Where the unfulfilled are satisfied and the unknown scars are reconciled. There's an open door to a brand new life. Up close in the presence of a Savior. Tear off the roof, lower me down, whatever it takes to get me to you. Oh. Tear off the roof, lower me down, whatever it takes to get me to you.
Well, good morning. Oh, somebody didn't eat their Wheaties, right? Are we still using Wheaties or are we something else, right? Good morning, church. Look to your neighbor and say, welcome home. What a blessing it is this morning to be in the house of God and to worship God with each and every one of you. Amen. Uh, I want to just remind us that we are in a sermon series entitled Revival. And last Sunday, we talked about a return to the Word of God. And it is my prayer that aside from Sunday morning and maybe midweek, that we are a church that opens up the Bible, the law of God, the Word of God, uh, on a daily basis to go through it, not just for information, but for transformation. If you do not have a Bible, we have placed some Bibles here at our Connect Summer at our Connect Center, rather, uh, we would love for you to take one. If you know somebody who would need a Bible, please take one of those Bibles. Feel free to take. They are free. Amen. Uh, and take one of those so we can continue to be a church uh, that goes to the Word of God. Can you say amen? Uh, I, this morning, I want you to look to your neighbor and say, a lot can happen. A lot can happen when you pray. Amen? A lot can happen when you pray. So the opposite of that is if we're not praying, then ain't nothing happening, right? I know that's not good English, but ain't nothing happening if we're praying. A while back, a young man comes up to me and he says, hey, pastor, could you pray for my hearing? I'm like, well, sure. I, yeah, of course. I would be honored to pray with you and for you. And so I brought him up to the altar and I grabbed some oil, right? And I anointed his head and my head and my hands and and it's just a symbolic thing, right? I had some oil on my fingers, and I kind of touched his ears. And remember, anything can happen, right? Amazing things can happen when we pray. And so I'm praying for him and just pouring out my heart to God. And, and he is praying with me and saying amen and amen and amen. And, and after we spent some time in praying and prayer, right, uh, he stood up, and I asked him, like, well, how's your hearing now? He says, well, I don't know. I don't go to court till Wednesday. Un aplauso al Señor. Amen. Renee, I hope that was okay. Where's Renee at, right? <laughs> Renee, well, amen. Well, good morning. Uh, uh, this morning, I want to get into the word of, some of you are still trying to figure it out, right? Uh, I want to get into the word of God. We're going to read this morning from Acts 16. Verses 25 and 26, and then we're going to jump over to verse 29 through 33. Acts 16, 25 through 26, or 25 and 26, and then verse 29 through 33. Uh, we are going to talk about a commitment to prayer. Look to your neighbor and say, a commitment to prayer. A lot can happen when the people of God pray. Hear now the word of God. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. We are an open book. As believers, we live in a fishbowl. People are looking at us. People are listening to us, and it is important how we respond to the different situations in our lives. Can you say amen? And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. When God moves, God moves. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's, not just Paul and Silas's, but everyone's, all of the other prisoners, their chains fell or came loose. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He thought that they had escaped, that everyone had fled. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, he didn't ask what happened. What was the earthquake? How did your shackles come off? How did the chains come off? Who opened the doors? He asked this question, Sirs, 
What must I do to be saved? You know what that tells me? That not only the prisoners were listening to Paul and Silas pray and sing hymns, the jailer was also listening to Paul and Silas pray and sing hymns. Can you say amen? And he asked this question, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At the hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were, say that with me, baptized. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. Can you say thanks be to God? Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we are so grateful for your word. Again, not just for information, but the transformation of us, dear Lord, the renewing of our minds, that our minds would be more like Christ. This morning, God, we thank you for your word, for we know that we cannot live on bread alone, but every word that flows from your mouth. Indeed, God, I pray that it would be your words that would be on my mind, on my lips, and in my heart, that it would be you, Father, that would preach through your servant today. It's not about me. I have emptied myself to be filled by you, to serve you to the utmost, and to serve your people to the utmost. May your word penetrate our hearts. And we thank you because we know that your word will never return void. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said. A little background. Paul and Silas are in jail. They have gone to Philippi and they have been not only in prison, but they have been disrobed. They have been flogged. They were beaten with rods. And do you want to know their crime? According to these people that have brought them before the magistrate, they're saying, hey, these people are causing an uproar. Philippi is a part of Rome. And so these people have brought Paul and Silas before the magistrates. And they're like, hey, these two Jews, right, are causing some problems here in Philippi because they're encouraging us to believe and to practice things that we cannot believe or that we cannot accept as Romans. Well, that sounds great. Like, who likes troublemakers, right? Any troublemakers in the house, right? Who likes to hang around with troublemakers or who likes agitators in their community? And the, the, the problem with this is that's not the real reason that they brought them before the magistrates, Paul and Silas. The real reason is as they were going one day to prayer, the, a piece, the property that they had, which was a woman, unfortunately, this woman had a spirit that would allow her to predict the future. So as the owners of this woman, they would use her for money, right? She, not that this happens today, right? She was a fortune teller, and she would go and have the spirit and predict people's future, and she wouldn't make anything because she was essentially a slave, but she had some people who were, mira, cha-ching, cha-ching, because who doesn't want to know their future, right? Well, she keeps coming after Paul and Silas, and she says, hey, these two guys are servants of the Most High God. And they are telling the people how to be saved. So she has this spirit, right? And she is able to discern that Paul and Silas are serving God Almighty and letting the people know how to be saved through Jesus Christ. Amen? Well, she is coming after Paul and Silas for a couple of days now, and she's just not going, hey, these guys are men of God, and they are, you know, teaching you or, or telling you how to be saved. The Bible says that she's shouting, hey, these two guys, and so Paul gets annoyed. He gets annoyed to the point where he looks at her, and he says, spirit, come out of her. And guess what? The spirit leaves. Wouldn't it be great to, to be able to do that to some of the people that annoy us? 
I don't know if it's a spirit, right? Maybe that's just how, how they are. But every now and then I would be like, you know, can you come out of her or him spirit? But the spirit does. Their crime, my brothers and sisters, is going against the Roman culture. It's going against uh, what everybody's doing. It's going against, you know, the whole thought process of this Roman community. And they are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why are they before the magistrates? Because their crime was they were being accused of going against the Roman culture because they were men of God preaching about Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Just a quick word. Uh, we're called to do that today. Amen. You and I are called to be different. And I think that's a struggle that I have for myself. Like when people see me, who do they see? Right? Do they see Danny living for him? And, and am I only focused about me? Or do they see a servant of God shouting, telling people how to be saved? Believe in Jesus and you will be saved. And a lot of it has to do with my own testimony, my own witness, right? A repentive life, and we'll talk about that in, in another series, right? But if I'm going to make an impact, especially in my family, my family needs to see not me. My family needs to see a servant of the God Most High preaching about Jesus, letting people know how they can be saved because that's the mission. Amen. That is why we exist. That is why Valley Praise exists. Can you say amen? Look to your neighbor and say, a lot can happen when you pray. Because prayer moves the hand of God. Years ago, more than 29 years ago, I was a young single guy, right? Uh, a youth leader in a church called here in Primera called El Buen Samaritano. And back in the day, we would do these things called... Virgilias de oración, right? Prayer vigils. And we would do them with the youth. We had about 30 kids, and we would have these all-night prayer vigils at the church. I would love to tell you that all the youth prayed all night, right? But we had to throw in some games and some snacks and some, you know, karaoke or whatever we did, right? But we did throw in Bible study, and there were moments of praying, we would come to the altar and pray. This was from Friday to Saturday. So a Friday night at Buen Samaritano Church was packed with youth and youth leaders. And we were there all night doing our utmost to pray and to worship God. And it was in the morning, and I got to say it was around 8 o'clock in the morning in Primera. And uh, we just had a little uh, worship church. We didn't have... Uh, we had an old wooden, beaten up old uh, pastor's house that we would use for our Sunday school. I mean, the roof had a hole in it, right? This is how, so a Sunday morning, everybody was either mosquitoes or flies getting them out of our, our Bibles and stuff. So this was Saturday morning around 8 o'clock, and we were closing out uh, our prayer vigil with the youth. And so we were all at the altar, and we had spent some time there. Uh, maybe some of the youth fell asleep, I don't know, right? But they were all there. Well, it just so happened that the superintendent of that denomination that we were part of brought in a church from Pearland, Texas. And they came in, and they were looking to do a mission project uh, for a church or for a community here in the Rio Grande Valley. And that morning, the superintendent took them to that Buen Samaritano Church in Primera, Texas, and when they walked in, praise the Lord, they saw everyone at the altar praying. And when they got done speaking, you know, and doing, talking to the superintendent, you know, they were like, this is what we want to do. And if you go to Primera, there on Wilson Road behind uh, the elementary, there is the church. And next to it is a brick educational wing that this church built uh, from Pearland. For the church in Primera, can you say amen? Praise God. Because a lot can happen when you pray. Prayer moves the hand of God. 
The Bible says that Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. In the jail cell, Paul and Silas prayed and sung unto the Lord. They have been tortured and they have been in prison. And they find themselves in a dark and difficult situation. However, look to your neighbor and say, however, times were tough. It was difficult. It was hard. They were in pain, but they still prayed and praised the Lord. Amen. They still prayed and prayed, prayed and praised the Lord. How difficult is it to worship and to praise God in the middle of difficult moments in our lives? I will be the first on the bus to say it is hard. It is hard to pray and worship God when we are in the middle of a hard and painful situation. However, amazing things can happen when you pray. And when you pray, it moves the hand of God and your faith will grow. Amen? When our life is covered in prayer, when our life is saturated in prayer, when we pray in the good times, Prayer helps us to pray in the difficult times. It'll flow from us out to pray and praise the Lord no matter what moment, no matter how difficult the situation will be. The scripture tells us that they were not only singing hymns, but they were also praying. And I wonder this, what did they pray, right? Right? Here they are, they've been beaten, they've been flogged, they've been stripped of their clothes, their feet are shackled, and they're behind the bars. I wonder what they prayed. I know what I would pray. Get these shackles off my feet, open this door, and let me get vengeance on these people who have falsely accused me, right? Now, I'm not big and I'm not strong, but, you know, I get mad, right? I would seek vengeance. I don't know if they prayed that. I don't know if that was their prayer because at the same time, they're praising God. They're singing hymns unto the Lord. I think their prayer is one of thanksgiving for who God is. As a matter of fact, I even think that they didn't not only pray a prayer of thanksgiving, but they probably prayed the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, our Father who art in heaven. Amen? This morning, I want us to look at that, the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, and you can stay there. The Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. I'm pretty sure a majority of us know the Lord's Prayer. We may know it in different forms, and we may end it differently. The Catholics don't say something that, that I say in my prayer, but essentially, this is how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. This, then, is how you should pray. Say it with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We're just there. My brothers and sisters, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, speaks to the sovereignty of God. And what does that mean, sovereignty? Sovereignty speaks to the power of God. Sovereignty speaks that God is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. This means that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and God is not just in everywhere, but he is in everywhere in every time. We have an understanding of time, but our understanding of time is not the understanding or the time that God lives in because God lives in everywhere and in every time. Try to define that. That is one of the mysteries of God. Can you say amen? But the sovereignty of God, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus teaches us to pray and he says, Our Father in heaven, it speaks to the sovereignty of God. Essentially what it is saying is that God is in control. Can you say amen? No matter where we are in life, God is there. In the good, you have to know that God is there. But even in the hard times of life, 
You have to know that God is there and you have to pray thanking God. Hey, I am in a difficult situation. I am in pain. I am in agony. I am hurting. The enemy would want me to have disbelief. But God, you are the Father in heaven. You are sovereign. You are all present, all knowing, and you are able to do everything in this situation that I'm in. And we do that when we pray, giving thanks to God and praying God, praising God. When we believe in that spiritual truth, in the sovereignty of God, well, guess what? No matter what situation you're in, you're going to be able to sing hymns. No matter what situation you're in, if you will trust in the sovereignty of God through prayer, you're going to be able to praise him. You're going to be able a cantarle, uh, uh, to sing coritos or to sing whatever song is in your heart. You will praise God because you're going to, in case he was speaking about this earlier, because you're going to what? Trust in the sovereignty of God. Can you say amen? This is why Paul and Silas can sing hymns while they are in prison and shackles because they know and they trust in the sovereignty of God. Matthew chapter 6 and then verse 10 says this, right? He says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Ouch. Your kingdom come. What does it say next? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, sometimes when we do the Lord's Prayer, or sometimes I'll close my prayer with the Lord's Prayer, and I get to that point, may your will be done in my life on earth as it is in heaven and in my life. It's difficult. One, we have no, sometimes we don't know what God is doing in our lives. Paul and Silas are in prison, but they have to trust in the sovereignty of God. They have to believe that this is the will of God for their life. Paul and Silas surround, surrender to the will of God. You know, they surrender to the will of God. So here's the thing. You, you got to know this, right? They, the, the owners of this woman, they bring Paul and Silas before the magistrates, and he says, hey, these Jews. Well, that's not who they were. They were not Jews. Paul and Silas were, were what? Does anybody know? They were Romans, right? And it wasn't later till they found this out that all, all of a sudden all these Roman magistrates, they fell back because you don't treat Roman citizens this way. They stripped them and they flogged them. That doesn't happen. And all Paul and Silas had to say was, oh, hold on. We're not Jews, right? We are Roman citizens and we don't deserve this. And somehow, some way, right, through prayer, they discerned that this was the will of God. We were going to trust in God, amen? And we were going to allow the will of God to play out in our lives. It wasn't until afterwards that they told them that we are Romans. It wasn't until after the jailer tended to their wounds that they said that we were Romans. It wasn't until after the jailer believed in Jesus and got saved that they confessed they were Romans, rather. It wasn't until after the whole household of this Roman guard believed in Jesus and got saved. It wasn't until after all of his household, and that could be his wife, that could be his children, it also could be the servants that made a, became, were part of his household, after they all believed and were baptized. My brothers and sisters, when we allow the will of God to operate in our life, we are going to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Amen? If I am focused only on Danny Longoria, I'm not going to bear any fruit because that's not the will of God. It's only when I surrender to the will of God and trust in the sovereignty of, Lord, of the Lord that there will be fruit. For the kingdom of God, can you say amen? Matthew 11, 6, 11 says this, right? He says, our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And verse 11 says this. Give us today our daily bread. When we trust in the sovereignty of God, we trust that God is our provider in whatever situation we find ourselves in. Amen. In whatever situation that we find ourselves in. I pray that you know this. God loves you. God, look at everyone and say, God loves me. Right? There may be moments when I don't, but God surely does all the time. Right? God loves you. God cares for you. And God will provide for you. Not just physically, yes, that he will give us our daily bread and, you know, he will provide for us and, and all of our needs. But those needs, a lot of times, aren't just physical needs. They're spiritual needs. And God says, listen, I know you're going through the river right now. I know you're going through the water. I know you're going through the fire. But I am with you. God provides for us when we go through spiritual challenges in our life, even physical ones, right? But God strengthens us. He empowers us. And he, as we draw to him, he draws to us and he cares for us. For us. If you are going through a difficult time this morning, I spoke to someone this morning, they're like, how are you? Well, I still have my issues. But I'm moving forward because I know God is with me. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Bread gives us energy. Food gives us energy. Food uh, empowers us. And so in the same sense, spiritually speaking, God empowers us to move forward. And then Jesus goes on to tell the disciples on how to pray. He says, and forgive us of our debts. In other versions, it says, forgive us of our trespasses. Essentially, what Jesus is saying, you need to pray this. Forgive us of our sins as we also forgive our debtors or those who have trespassed against us, or those who have sinned against us. In the Lord's Prayer, we acknowledge that we are sinners and not deserving of anything. Do we understand that? I, I pray that we do. You know, we live in a culture where, you know, I deserve this, and I have rights, and, and, and it's a challenge for us because we don't live in a kingdom. Right. We don't have a king and a queen and, you know, who writes the laws? The king writes, they writes the laws and and there's no voting. Right. There's no polling. There's none of that. Whatever the king dictates. Right. That's the law. And we aren't volunteers. We are servants. Right. In a democracy. Right. We vote and we elect presidents and we elect law. We vote on laws and. We vote for this and we vote for that, and, and it's my right to vote, right, and, and, and so forth. Well, in the kingdom of God, God isn't looking for volunteers. God calls us. Amen? It's not what I want. It's not how, you know, the laws that I want. It's not like I'm going to take a part of this Bible and I'll, I can do this, but I'm not going to do this other part of the Bible because, you know, that just affects who I am. We can't pick and choose. It is all the word of God. It is all the law of God. And we have to surrender to God's law. We have to surrender to, to the will of God, my brothers and sisters. And we have to recognize that we don't deserve anything. Right? But we pray this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, in the good and the bad. And we recognize that I'm a sinner. But we also pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Because even though I am a sinner, remember... God loves me, and God cares for me, and God provides for me, and God it, it has done everything in, that he can do for me to be forgiven of my trespasses, to be forgiven of my debts, to be forgiven of my sins. And because I have received grace, guess what the Bible says? You must also give what? Grace. You must also forgive 
my brothers and sisters, in the Lord's Prayer, right, we recognize the mercy and the grace of God. And when we know that, we can have peace. We can have shalom. Shalom is not the absence of chaos. Shalom is in the midst of chaos in our lives. We can have peace. And we can have comfort. And because of that, pues podemos cantar himnos todo el día. We can sing hymns all day long and praise God. Verse 13 says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Paul and Silas were not at war with flesh and bone. Can you say amen? They, like us, are at battle against the evil one. It wasn't the Romans, it wasn't the magistrate, or it wasn't the jailers that they were against. It is against Satan, whose purpose, whose only purpose is to rob, steal, and destroy the children of God. They knew this. That's why when the shackles came loose and the jail doors were open, they stayed. They're like, oh, temptation, right? The temptation is just because I can doesn't mean you should. Just because I can doesn't make it right in the eyes of the Lord. Hey, my shackles are free. The, jail, the doors are open. Vamos todos. And all the prisoners run free, right? Who's going to get in trouble? The Roman centurion, the Roman guard, right? But they recognize, hey, just because we can doesn't mean we should because I'm going to trust in the sovereignty of God. I'm going to surrender to the Lord's will. And maybe this was a test. God says, hey, we're called to obey the land, the laws of the land. Can you say amen? amen. I say ouch because I'm a speeder. Before I forget me, right? <laughs> I have a heavy foot, right? But I'm always reminded, you know, hey, God, uh, help me, right, to, to obey the laws of the land. But just because we can doesn't mean we should and what is right in the eyes of the Lord, my brothers and sisters, because our battle is not against each other. Our battle is against the evil one, Satan. Our battle is against the devil. And when we pray this Lord's Prayer, we are reminded of that. We are reminded of that. During one of the most difficult times of their lives, these two men prayed to God. And they sang hymns to God. The other prisoners heard them. And in the middle of their worship, God blessed their faithfulness. God freed them. Not only did God free Paul and Silas, but all the prisoners. And let's think about that for a moment. All of the prisoners were set free. Paul and Silas didn't speak with them. He didn't say one word to them personally. All they did was pray a prayer, I believe, of thanksgiving. And this prayer of thanksgiving allowed them the peace, the shalom that they needed to praise and worship God. That is what the prisoners heard. And I believe is that they're hearing these people and listening to them sing and pray and their testimony. I believe that they believed in Jesus and were saved. That is the mercy and the grace of God. Amen? Paul and Silas in this difficult situation, because they prayed and they praised to the Lord, I believe those prisoners believed and got saved. And not only that, but when the, the, when the Roman guard realized that they hadn't escaped, they could have, but they didn't. They stayed, and he was so grateful. But more than being grateful because they didn't leave, he's like, there is a God. The God that these men believe in is the true God, the only God. And he asked them, what must I do to be saved? And they tell him, believe in Jesus, and you will be saved. And then he takes it. And who knows? I like to think that this Roman guard was one of the ones that maybe flogged them. Right? Le casó daño. He hurt them and he caused them pain. And, and maybe he enjoyed it. But because of their witness, because of their prayer, 
Because of them singing hymns to, to God, his life was transformed. And one moment he was beating them, and at the next morning, moment, moment he's tending to their wounds, beating them, and he even brought them to their home. Because why? I'm not the only one that wants to be saved. I want my family to be saved. I want my whole household to believe in Jesus and be saved. And guess what? They were. Because men of God prayed and sung hymns. And that is the revival. Amen? That is revival. Now, you know, we can say today that because of that incident, you know, many lives were transformed. And to this day, we, we are part of that seed that was planted back in the day in Philippi, in Philippi by Paul and Silas. And, but re revival, for me, really begins in my home. There's a story of Billy Graham, right, in the 1940s. And he was a student under uh, a theologian named Dr. Orr. And, and I pray this story is true, but... They were in England, and they went to John Wesley's prayer room. And in it, right, the, 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 the kneeling, the, where, they kneeled, where he kneeled to pray was all worn, supposedly from all the hours that John Wesley prayed to God. And if you don't know, John Wesley, part of the Great Awakening, the revival, not only in England, but mainly here in the United States, millions of lives believed in Jesus and were saved. And the story is that when they were up there, Billy Graham was so moved, right, by, by the, the kneeler where John Wesley would pray. And everybody else went to the bus, and Dr. Orr was like, hey, where's Billy at? Where's, where's Billy Graham, right? And so he went back into the house, and he found Billy Graham there on his knees. And his prayer was this, Lord, do it again. Do it again. And then he said this, and do it with me. Do it with me. And I don't have to tell you anything about Billy Graham, but that God surely did do it again, and God surely did do it through him. What is it that I hope that we take home today? Number one, that we would open up our Bible. Amen? That we would be theologians, students of the word, being informed and transformed by the word of God. But that the second thing is that we would be people who pray in the good and in the bad, giving thanks to God because God is sovereign and that we're going to trust in him no matter what. That we're going to recognize that God is going to help us through any difficult situation that we find ourselves. That I don't deserve anything, but God is a good, good father. Can you say amen? I hope that we leave today wanting to read God's word and wanting to be on our knees and pray. You know why? For me, because there are people in my household that need to believe in Jesus and be saved. I want revival to happen all over the Rio Grande Valley. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. But you know, all of that doesn't really mean a lot to me if there are family in my household who aren't saved. And so I pray that they see in me that in the good and the bad, I'm going to pray to God and I'm going to sing hymns to the Lord and that they would hear me and that they would see me not being critical, not judging, not being angry, not being jealous, but that the fruit of the Spirit would be manifested in me and that only happens through reading the Word and through prayer and through that they will be saved. I want revival to happen in my home. And I pray that that would be your prayer today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all of God's people said amen and amen. Would you please stand with me? I pray that you will join me up at this altar. I'm going to be leaving to go preach in Santa Rosa. But before we give an announcement, right, the announcements are closed, that you would come and join me at this altar. 
and that we would pray the Lord's Prayer, and that we would pray, Lord, like Billy Graham, do it again. Bring revival to America. Are we in agreement? America needs revival. There's revival happening all over the world. Unfortunately, it's not happening here. And we can argue all day long about why that's not happening. But I think if we return to the word and if we commit to prayer, the spirit of God can do amazing and glorious things right here. And that we would come up and that we would pray, Lord, do it again. And that we would pray, Lord, start with me. Let my kids see a dad who prays, not just for meals, but that is on his knees praying for his family. I've shared this before. The greatest fear that I have, right, is that one day I'm going to stand before a holy God. And as a man, I'm going to have to give an account to the Lord for my family. Would Danny, did your kids see you pray? Only... I'm not going to let you know, right? I'll let God know. But you know who most definitely knows? My kids, right? Danny, did your kids see you open up the word of God? God knows, but so do my kids. My brothers and sisters, I pray that you would join me in saying this prayer, the Lord's Prayer. And however you know it, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I say this, for thine is the kingdom and the power of and the glory forever and ever. Now would you say this prayer with me, Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. Just don't repeat it because I'm asking you to, but pray it and believe it from the inner, innermost being of who you are. Lord, do it again and say with me and begin with me. And begin with me. Let revival happen in me. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God keep you. God continue to shine his face upon you. And above all, may God grant you shalom in the difficult moments of your life. And in that, may you truly worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Man, thank you, Pastor Danny, for those words. So as he was speaking, I, I kept thinking about this one pastor that I hear, that I listen to, and I read his devotion every day. And he says, you know, when Jesus comes, it doesn't really talk a lot about what happens to the U.S., right? It talks about all these other countries. It talks about everything else. And he says, and I'm hoping, he says, my prayer is that the reason we don't hear so much about the U.S. is because we've all gone with Jesus. Amen? And, and yes, we have so much going on, but... It's like Pastor Danny says, a lot can happen when we pray. And the second one was that prayer moves the hand of God. So I pray, my prayer for you all is that we don't, people just don't see us here in prayer in church. What does our work life look like? What are What is when we're hanging out with friends, when we're hanging out with family? Do they know that we are a church of prayer? Do they know that I am a person of prayer? And I pray that they do. Church, it is an amazing day to be at Valley Praise. Those of you that are here, welcome. If you're joining us online, please let us know in the comments where you're worshiping from. Uh, it's always good to see uh, the many, many places that people worship through Valley Praise. Um, it's a, like I said, great day. Regular announcements are everything that we normally do during the week is still going on this week. So you don't need to text me. Yes, we're having midweek. Um, so we, yes, we're going to do that. And the most, probably the most important thing, and I don't, is it because I don't see her? Oh, there she is. There you go. So today, right, five to seven, we are having a revival of our youth. So if you are a youth, yes, that, that deserves a good little whoop. Um, that deserves our that, a praise, right, for that. So today, youth, five to seven here at Valley Praise, we encourage you to be here. If you're willing to help, I'm sure you need things. Get with Sabrina. She's back there. 
she only she knows what what is needed so yes today youth five to seven here at valley praise church is a great day to be alive right it's a great day to worship god it's a great day to be who we are and so whatever you're going through whatever it is that is holding you back remember that all we have to do is pray amen be blessed church